All right, so I, before I started doing this um, and without talking, does anybody remember, or maybe I didn't say it for you guys, does anybody remember what, uh, what I said for you to look for whenever you see a sign or trigonometric function squared? The what? Pythagorean identities, yeah. right? Anytime you see a trigonometric function squared, automatically think to yourself, all right, I might want to or might need to use the Pythagorean identities. Same thing like whenever you guys see a right triangle. You know you can apply the Pythagorean theorem, right? And that's something you guys should always think about. You know, when you see a right triangle, ooh, I know that Pythagorean, ident or Pythagorean theorem can work out. Well, when you have a, a trigonometric function squared, there's any other identity, it's not going to apply except for, our, our, um, or well, a couple of them will apply as far as like thing, but the main important thing to get rid of that squared we're going to want to look for is by using um, the Pythagorean identities. So let's go ahead and write out the ones that um, deal with sine squared and cosecant squared, right? I gave you guys that little quiz to kind of test you, see what you have. So you need to know uh, that sine squared of theta, or we're dealing with x, so x plus cosine squared of x equals 1. And then for the cosecant, we know that 1 plus cotangent squared of x equals cosecant squared of x. Okay? So you have to know those two Pythagorean identities, all right, to apply them. So these are the two identities, but is that what we have up here? No. So what we're going to do again is we're going to transform our Pythagorean identities so they can fit into what we're looking for. This says 1 minus sine squared of x. Well, here I have sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x. So what I showed you guys last time, I don't need to explain this. I can easily tell you this, show you guys this without talking, is I'm just going to, what happens if I subtract sine of x on both sides? Is my equation still going to be the same and equivalent? Yeah, I'm not doing anything. I'm just using the subtraction property of equality. So my equation is still going to have the same value, or it's still going to be equal, but now it's just written in a different format, right? All right. Then I can do the same thing here. What about if I just subtracted 1? I'm not changing the equality of the equation. All right. So now you guys see I have the numerator right here and the denominator right there. Right? But what we want to do is we want to simplify this. So what we say is since this equals that and since this equals that, how about we put in, we replace what they equal into our function to see if we can simplify it. Does that kind of make a little sense on what I'm doing? All right. So since 1 minus sine squared of x is equal to cosine squared of x, let's put that up there, all over the cotangent squared of x. OK? So now, so far, this looks pretty simplified. This is you know, simplified down there. But let's see, can we even simplify it even further? All right. So then we look at, well, how about let's try to get rid of a fraction down here. Let's try to get rid of this. So if we know that cotangent, what is cotangent squared of x going to equal? Well, again, we can apply the, the quotient identity. The cotangent squared would be the same thing as cosine squared of x divided by sine squared of x, right? Because cotangent is cosine over sine. So if it's squared, that just means it's cosine squared over sine squared. All right, if it was cubed, it would be cosine cubed over sine cubed. So let's uh, go and replace this over here. Let's see what happens. So if I have cosine squared of x divided by cosine squared of x divided by sine squared of x. And then, ladies and gentlemen, what have we been doing so many times in this class when we have a fraction on the bottom of our of another fraction, how do we get rid of the denominator? We multiply by the reciprocal. So you take the reciprocal of this, which would be sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. We multiply by the reciprocal because any number multiplied by a reciprocal multiplies to 1. What do we do in the bottom? You multiply in the top. So now I'm multiplying sine squared of x divided by cosine squared of x. So therefore, what this really looks like I know I kind of ran out of room, but this really looks like this. So therefore, this is actually in the numerator. So you have a cosine squared in the numerator and a cosine squared in the denominator. 
So therefore, they're actually going to divide out to 1, leaving you with a sine squared of theta. Or of x, I'm sorry. Okay? Amazing. <laughs>